Hey, what's up guys? This is Freddy Bonfa back with another amazing tutorial and this time I want to talk about Cinema 4D 2024 particles plus pyro attraction plus a beautiful liquid effect. All right. So a lot of stuff is going on here and I will share as always the full knowledge on my Patreon, but also here on YouTube. I just wanted to give you some techniques here, some of the knowledge. All right. And you can see that this effect is definitely relying on different cool stuff. So you will get this liquid effect plus Plus we combine it with a beautiful and strong pyro simulation here. All right. And this pyro simulation also has like these subtle but really nice sparks here. So just look close on it like these little details here. And these are attracted particles from the new particle simulation tools in Cinema 4D 2024.4. But don't worry, of course, you can be way more brutal and in your face with the particles. But here, I just want to keep it a little bit more subtle. All right. Yeah, I think it is time to just dive into Cinema 4D and share some of the knowledge. Okay. And as I said, I will break down everything on my Patreon. So if you want to really get into the details to create some something beautiful like this one and also how to create this liquid bubble effect that you can actually combine with the other renderings in post. So you can do that in After Effects. But of course, you can also mix all of that stuff. But of course, you can mix all of that stuff also together in one rendering. OK, here is another version which looks like really super dark, like almost like a galaxy stuff is going on here. And let me just see what will happen when I put another light into the scene. Then you can see the smoke better. But of course, as I mentioned, you can combine all of these renderings, for example, in After Effects. So let me just, for example, just put this one on top of it. And maybe we want to screen this one together with the other one. Now you can see that you can easily make this rendering even more versatile and complex. So yeah, sometimes I just like to render out different renderings and put them together in comp. But of course, you can also do everything in cinema directly. But of course, I know that you are here for the part particle stuff. Okay. So I just put all of the new particle stuff here into my layout. If you are curious how to do that on the Maxon training team, YouTube channel, Noseman is explaining this one. He makes a pretty nice introduction to the new particles. So I will skip that and focus on something that is more exciting. I think that the pyro attract effect is just really, really beautiful. Okay. So this just gives your particle instantly some beautiful movements. So let me show you how to do that. Maybe I will just make the sphere a little bit smaller, put this one to 50. Now click on it, go to simulations and put a pyro emitter onto it. And I guess that already you will have a beautiful simulation here. Let me just make this one a little bit longer so you can see the smoke here. This is really nice. You get the beautiful curls and the turbulence. All is looking nice. So already you could just attract particles from this one. So therefore you could select a sphere, go to mesh emitter. If you don't have it in your layout, just go over there, go to mesh emitter. Let's put it in and let me just see if we get some particles. Okay, the particles are pumping outwards with a certain speed. This is not exactly what we want. We want to probably get rid of their speed. And maybe I want to just have way more particles. Maybe put this one to 10,000. That seems to be a good number for the start. I mean, now they will be just on the surface here. So what you need now is pretty simple. You just go over here and put a pyro attract effector or modifier into your layout and simple rule here here that I can quickly mention, but I will talk about that in upcoming tutorials. Your particles live in this particle group. And if you want to just restrict this effect only to these particles, then it's a good habit to just put your effector or modifier into the particle group. Okay. And I think already now these particles, they should be attracted by our smoke. You can see it here. This is nice and beautiful. And now you could render these particles and the smoke or only the particles or only the smoke, whatever you want to do. But trust me, this particle attract gives you such a beautiful natural movement. And yeah, I mean, in a very subtle way, and I have to admit, I could do the same effect with 10 millions of particles or something like that. But you can see all of these beautiful sparkles here, they are attracted by the smoke. And as I mentioned already multiple times, this effect relies more on the smoke. But I think that these particles are just a beautiful, nice addition to it. And nothing will hold you back from making this effect more prominent. And yeah, 
yeah, just put crazy numbers in here. Okay, so we can just put this one to 100,000 and let me see this once again. And you can see this is still pretty fast. Let's put this one to a million. And I think the system is still moving pretty nice. Okay, so you can get a lot of details with this particle attraction. Just look at this one. This is crazy. But let me just put this one down a little bit more. But maybe as a little addition, I can just show you the basics of the effect that I used. So I don't want to just move the smoke upwards, but I want to let it pump out from the center here into a sphere. So how can you do that? First, you should press Control D to get rid of the gravity. And maybe for now, we can just pause the particles here. And let's just see now the smoke and the fire is static. And this is looking like um, pretty ugly. It's a bad start, but we will make this one better. First, we want to get rid of the temperature. Now you just have this little smoke bubble here. And now we want to move this one outwards. And how could you do that? You could try it, for example, with a field force where the force is going in a radial manner out from here. But you could also probably do it with the attractor. The attractor is the cheap version, I would say, of the field force. OK, so this is pretty simple and has its downsides. But I think in this case it will work. So you don't want to use it as an attractor, but as a repulsion effect here. OK, so maybe I will just put this one to a thousand. And I'm sometimes not sure if I should use acceleration or force. So let's just see what will happen now. OK, the smoke will be pushed outwards. Maybe this one has to be stronger. Let's put this one 5000. OK. Okay, so this could be a nice start. All right, it seems like the smoke is living a little bit too long. That's why I press Control D, go into Pyro. I will go down there into the density and maybe I just put this one to 15. Now the smoke should die earlier and you can see the smoke puff will just die here. And um, I have to admit it doesn't look that great. I will put this one to 10, but we don't want to use this smoke puff to attract our particles, but we want to mix in some turbulence. And something that I just recognized, which is really funny, is that this one somehow goes into a cube shape. OK, I have to do some research why it is doing that, because actually it should go into a sphere shape. All right. So, yeah, it's kind of funny that you get this little smoke cube, but it's all fine. We want to totally destroy it anyway with turbulence or put the turbulence into the scene. Maybe I will just go crazy from the start and put this one to 500. Let's see if this one is a good number here to make our smoke more turbulent. All right, it's kind of cool. I think that the scale could be higher. So I multiply it with three. Let's just see what kind of smoke we will get now. And this seems to be like a cool turbulence. I have to say I'm sorry because my computer is super loud. All right, so this is looking kind of good, but I think the strength should be way bigger. Let's see what happens now. Now you get a more prominent noise from the turbulence and this is looking quite beautiful. So hopefully, let me see what will happen when I now activate my mesh emitter again. OK, I think we will have a little problem. Now our particles are also affected by the turbulence and the attractor. But these effects, they should only distort our smoke and the particles should only rely on the pyro effect. So everything here will have an effect on everything. This, these are global effectors, so to say. And this one is only affecting the mesh emitter. So maybe I can just create another particle group and put these ones into this particle group so they will not have an effect on my pyro attraction. Let's see if this one is working and it's working. That's beautiful. Now these particles will be attracted by our smoke. And when you press Control D, I think when you go down here, you can get rid of the pyro in the viewport. All right, let me just see this once again. OK, and you can see that these particles will be attracted by your turbulent smoke here. I will just put this one to 1 million here. So we have something beautiful for the end of this tutorial to look at. And you get the most beautiful turbulence here. All right. And I think that the particle attraction will just give you such a beautiful movement. OK, so when you go closer, you can see all of these details. And this is it for the YouTube training. All right. You can expect that I will create more particle training. I'm also very curious about the future with Insidium and X particles now that Cinema 4D is working on their own particle engine. Of course, still, you can do way more stuff in X particles. 
from Insidium, okay, because they just made it way more complex. But I think that these particles in Cinema 4D are just a really nice first start for Cinema 4D. I'm really excited about it. Okay, so I hope that you learned something. Thank you so much for your time. See you in the next tutorial. Bye, everyone.